thank you to the WFH um, to have invited me. So it's a couple of years ago that I was speaking as well about the same topic in this working group. So what I was going to do now, I didn't want to repeat everything what's there. I tried to summarize it. And the only thing I brought uh, are now new studies which have not been presented to see if there are differences. So first of all, when we are looking in uh, women in bleeding disorders, so we see that there are not only physical aspects, but as well psychosocial issues which are impaired and which distinguish women then from their male counterparts. And similar symptoms are clearly um, bleeds into joints and um, soft tissues and muscles. But of course, there are other aspects and other problems which are only concerning the women. And these are related to menstruation, pregnancy, labor, and delivery. So, but there is a big issue as well because there is a lack of awareness in uh, women with um, bleeding disorder. And often this leads women um, to a kind of isolation. So women are often with a bleeding disorder or undiagnosed. Often it happens that they are misdiagnosed or that they are even untreated. And so that uh, leads, of course, to um, serious complications. The psychosocial problems in women uh, which occur is on one hand that they feel as well different to other women uh, in their experience concerning different aspects like menstruation, pregnancy, postpartum wellness, and menopause. So they um, confirm or they report that they perceive themselves different as the healthy peers, and so this is another aspect which leads uh, to a kind of isolation. On the other hand, they feel that they don't receive adequate support from the different aspects, like from their own family, from the uh, nucleus family, but as well from the healthcare system, or as well in their working surroundings. So they feel that they're in somehow discriminated, or at least they don't receive the support which they would like to have. And so it is important to have sensitive intervention by professional providers and uh, where problems which are experienced can be um, tackled and can be worked on and uh, not to lead to undesirable emotional and uh, physical outcomes. And from the NHF, there is even a health initiative which is called Victory for Women. And this initiative addresses critical issues for women with bleeding disorders and help them to overcome those. So we spoke a lot about menorrhagia as well in the previous presentations and how this is linked to quality of life. I think I don't have to explain to you, but only to put some facts together. So 18 million women worldwide between 30 and 55 years perceive their menstrual bleeding to be excessive. So, and in 10%, it can be even uh, defined as menorrhagia. So it has, of course, a very negative impact on the quality of life in the women, uh, and women with bleeding disorders mainly suffer from menorrhagia. So around 13% of women with menorrhagia are diagnosed with von Willebrand disease, the most um, pop popular or present um, bleeding disorders. And in a German survey, it was found that 58% of women with von Willebrand suffer from menorrhagia. So, and there are guidelines um, that uh, the NICE guidelines say that um, quality of life should be improved in the treatment of menorrhagia. So the diagnosis of bleeding disorder after menorrhagia is as well a big issue. So when you look at uh, when women the first time report that they have problems, that they have menorrhagia, and which are usually present often as well at uh, Menage, so then there is a big delay until the women then are diagnosed. And I put you here only some facts together. In, um, a US um, stud uh, in a study in the USA, it was reported that uh, women are diagnosed with bleeding disorder with 30 years. Uh, in Germany, we conducted a study, multi-center study um, all over Germany. Here we found that women were normally diagnosed in median with 32 years. And in Turkey, another study, um, here women were diagnosed with 33.6 years. So you can see 
There is a big delay, and um, Kedava um, stated that there is approximately a delay of 16 years after um, um, Menach until the diagnosis of a bleeding disorder. And so this already explains all the impact on the quality of life. They have really problems. Um, when um, there is an initiative as well in Germany, uh, a patient association which meets only for von Willebrand, and often women are telling me why you cannot explain gynecologists and other doctors what's my problem. So I was so long not diagnosed or um, untreated and I was almost going to die. So it's a bit big impact. And if you know the name of your disease, it's already half of um, the rent, I would say. So then the frequency of hemostatic abnormalities in women with menorrhagia. So here it was a study conducted in Turkey and they looked at women who attended the outpatient clinic uh, who had a um, pictorial blood assessment chart um, greater than 185. And from those 90 women who were present there at the outpatient clinic, 60% um, had a normal hemostatic parameters and 40% um, had a um, bleeding disorder. And here probably you cannot um, read it so well, but um, it does not matter, so we can only focus on those issues where are differences with, um, between women with a bleeding disorder and those without bleeding disorder. So the number of pets which they used and the PBAC score was um, significantly higher in uh, women with von Willebrand disease and significantly higher in women with uh, PFD. So we had other aspects like frequent need of change of pets. So presence of severe dysmenorrhea uh, was only present or significantly higher in women with von Willebrand disease. Um, Mid-cycle pain was significantly higher in women with a PFD and as well and quite known to all um, the treaters who are treating women with bleeding disorders. History of postpartum uh, bleeding and family history of menorrhagia was significantly higher in women with von Willebrand disease. From the German study I was um, mentioning before, there we looked first when menstruation started and there was no difference between um, girls, so the adolescents now, and um, women, so it was around 12, 13 years. As well, it was quite comparable, the duration of the menstruation. For women, it was 6.7 days, for girls, 7.3 days. And um, here we asked some questions included in a questionnaire concerning the problems which occurred um, due to the menstruation. And here, um, 50% of the women reported about heavy pain and heavy bleeding was reported by 65% of the girls, the adolescents. This is a very nice circle which understands what are the pro which is a problem of bleeding and what are the consequences of bleeding in women. So you have, of course, the problem on the issue of anemia due to iron deficiency. You have a high amount of hospitalization or even maternal mortality. Limitations in daily activities are clear. Um, you have several aspects uh, where you're impacted that you cannot uh, follow your work, uh, that um, your functioning is impaired, time lost from work and school, adverse psychosocial effects um, are reported, reduced quality of life. There are several studies and I will bring you some um, summary then, what I mentioned before, um, several of the women um, had to undergo unnecessary procedures due to the fact that they had not the correct diagnosis and, of course, pain during um, menstruation. So, and if you look at all these consequences of bleeding, you understand that quality of life assessment becomes a very important part in uh, women with bleeding disorders. So, and why we want to assess it, there are different reasons. First of all, we want to understand better what it's life like for a woman with a bleeding disorder. But on the other hand, we can as well, um, thanks to quality of life assessment, identify specific healthcare needs for these patients. We want to see how different treatments impact on the quality of life of the women, and that can be done with quality of life assessment. We want to identify, or we can identify with that, optimal um, 
treatment strategies and all results in the delivery of an appropriate care for women with bleeding disorders. And as um, Rezan has already mentioned and stated, it is important in the health-related quality of life evaluation that the um, assessment is done pre-treatment to see what are the effects of different treatments. So, and um, she was already stating that it's important that we are using standardized instruments, validated questionnaires, because some of the studies from the older um, years, they most of the time use questionnaires which were done, um, let's say, in the kitchen at home. And um, so they don't fulfill the requirement of psychometric validated instruments. So von Willebrand disease is, as I mentioned already, I think that disease which is mainly concerned uh, for women and why here the assessment of quality of life is important. So there are some studies which have reported that there are um, aspects of bleeding symptoms in children which have an impact on the quality of life of those kids, but as well um, the type of von Willebrand uh, plays an important role in the occurrence uh, and appearance of joint bleeds. Another aspect which we mentioned already um, is a menorrhagia in more than 70% of women and the related symptoms and problems which occur. And then we have, of course, the diagnosis and everything which is related to the diagnosis, the age of the diagnosis, which impact the quality of life of women. So this is only a small snapshot of different aspects why we think that quality of life assessment in women with bleeding disorders is very important. And as I mentioned before, I'm not going to present you all of those studies, which I have already done now several times, but I want to summarize a bit what are the main findings, and I present you only data which have not been presented in this context. So comparing most of the studies when you assess um, von Willebrand um, and quality of life, there are as well the male population included. And so what they did, they um, differentiated uh, between women and men, and there is a significant difference, especially concerning aspects like pain and emotion and the thoughts. So, and women with uh, von Willebrand, they, from the pattern of their symptoms, they are much more comparable to um, patients with hemophilia or patients with HIV from the intensity of their problems and quality of life. So, and other studies found that, um, of course, the type of severity has an impact on the quality of life. The more severe is a type, uh, the more um, is impaired the quality of life of those patients. So here is um, a new study, which is called the interrelation ship between management of pain, adherence, and clotting factor treatment. And this is the impact study. This was a US study in 108 patients with bleeding disorders. So different um, bleeding disorders, hemophilia A and B, and von Willebrand, this was conducted in um, adolescents and young adults. It was a cross-sectional assessment of health-related quality of life. They used the SF36 as well. Um, treatment adherence was assessed and pain, which is a very important aspect, um, as we mentioned. So out of um, those patients, 14% had von Willebrand disease and 61 uh, were female. Um, a severe form was almost found in um, two-thirds of the patients and one-third reported moderate or chronic pain and one-third was... Um, classified according to the Veritas Pro or Veritas PRN questionnaire is non-adherent. So concerning the results, what they found concerning quality of life in a regression analysis, they found that women with von Willebrand disease had a 3.1 point reduction in the um, physical component score uh, compared to men. And this is highly significant. If you um, take uh, keep in mind, so the mean value of the physical component score is around 50. And so if you have a reduction of 13 points, this is a lot. So, and as well, there was a reduction concerning chronic pain. So 
those patients with um, severe or moderate chronic pain had a reduction, um, a 20 uh, 25.5 reduction in the physical component score and a 10-point reduction in the mental component score. And as we have uh, learned, mainly women um, are concerned by chronic pain. So women with bleeding disorders, if you want to summarize this study, had a significant worse health-related quality of life compared to men. Um, we have, of course, in several of the older studies, a comparison with the normal, with the general population, which is always helpful, but I don't want to bring you all the studies because they found all the same. So especially the differences are in women with uh, menorrhagia, so, and women with um, presently menstruating are more impaired than women not uh, presently menstruating. And what uh, they did not find in the studies, there was no difference. There was one study who assessed as well um, depression, and there was no difference uh, between uh, women with von Willebrand and uh, the general population concerning depression, which is already a good sign. Even so, I don't know if we would find it everywhere. But uh, this study should then uh, be repeated. Um, here, this is an overview of uh, three studies in 187 patients, which um, all assessed health-related quality of life with the generic SF36 questionnaire, where a high value is, uh, re um, represents a good quality of life. And here, the first um, four domains are related um, to the physical component score, and the last four domains can uh, be uh, summarized to the mental component score. And what we can see here, there is a significant difference between those uh, women with menorrhagia and compared to the general population. And this was um, significant in the domain's physical role, pain, and social functioning. As you can see, there is as well the social aspect, which plays a role. So if you have pain, if you have a a lot of bleeding, um, you probably withdraw yourself, you don't want to see your friends, and you have an impact on these aspects as well. This is a um, study in Sweden in 30 women with von Willebrand disease. 13% um, uh, had type 3 von Willebrand. 50% uh, of those women suffered um, from heavy menstrual bleeding, so it was here categorized. And almost all women perceived limitations in the overall life activities. We are looking at those. Uh, this was a kind of questionnaire constructed by the authors by themselves. They assessed as well quality of life um, with a SF36. And here it was found that um, women uh, with um, uh, heavy menstrual bleeding had a significant lower um, bodily pain. But uh, we look at the data. So here, this is the overall activities which I mentioned, and you can see a lot of aspects are impaired, um, starting with um, mood changes, affected family uh, life, affected sexual life, and all above 50%. So those women have a high impact on all different aspects of their life. Concerning the SF36, the health-related quality of life, in this slide you can see differences across a different type of von Willebrand, and only to focus here um, the bottom line, these are the patients with von Willebrand type 3, and as expected, those are the patients who have lower aspects in their health-related quality of life. But more interestingly, in the mental component score, not like we would perhaps expect in the physical component score. And here we have the comparison with the general population. This is a dotted line compared with the women. Out of those 30 women, 15 women were considered to have, uh, have heavy menstrual bleeding. And here is, um, as well, in all aspects, they are lower, but um, for the bodily pain, this is significant. So the other... Um, but we have to consider this is only a few patients. We have not so many patients. So if we would have a higher population, it would be significant. But we can clearly see the trend that all the domains are more impaired and especially the domain pain. Uh, there are as well other aspects like endometrial ablation in women with von Willebrand and health-related quality of life. And here it could be demonstrated 
that women who underwent global endometrial ablation with or without bleeding disorders, so that was equal, they compared it, resulted in a better quality of life and had a higher satisfaction. So, and um, another study showed that equally on the, regardless of the specific technique which was used, that the patient uh, reported improved health-related quality of life. Another aspect which we should consider as well, which might impact on the quality of life of patients, is the bleeding severity. So we have spoken now of type of the disease, we have um, spoken about menorrhagia, but as well, in general, the bleeding severity. And this is a Dutch retrospective cross-sectional uh, study uh, in von Willebrand patients, and here 509 patients were enrolled, of them 62% were female. And here you can see as well the um, uh, SF36, but we um, took out only some of the domains, uh, physical functioning, um, physical role, bodily pain, general health, and this is a sum score of these four physical domains. And in all, you can find a significant difference according to the bleeding severity. So this column here, the light gray column, is um, the column is a group with the patients which had a bleeding severity above 17. So they used a questionnaire, and this was a highest impairment. And what they could find, that there was a strong correlation with the phenotype of bleeding and the health-related quality of life. The higher was the bleeding severity, um, the higher was the impairment in the quality of life. Another aspect is as well the iron status um, linked to the bleeding, which has an impact on the quality of life of women. Here, um, I want to present you a Canadian study in 102 von Willebrand patients. Those patients were compared to age and sex matched norm data. 78% were female. Um, most had a type 1 von Willebrand disease with a bleeding, uh, median bleeding score of 12. Quality of life um, was here assessed as well with the generic SF36. Bleeding assessment tools were um, included like the ISTH uh, BAT. And what you can see here, again, it's the SF36. Um, for the different domains, this gray um, um, column is the group of women with von Willebrand disease, 102. And you can see here as well, for all domains, they found significant impairment compared to those women um, of the Canadian norm population, of the general population. And now we look a bit more in detail what else they found. They found a significant difference for type of von Willebrand. So um, patients with a type 3 had a lower um, quality of life compared to women with a type 2, for example. The ferritin level had a significant impact, uh, but only on one domain, which is a domain vitality. That would be this domain. Then, interestingly, they did not find a difference concerning the bleeding scores above 10. It did not um, decrease the uh, quality of life, but when they adjusted for different aspects like age, sex, socioeconomic um, status, and rurality, there was a trend. So those patients, um, with the increasing bleeding score, had a lower physical component and had a lower mental component. This was not significant, but there was a trend. And now a last study um, I want to present. This is a French multicenter study. Um, it was planned to be a five-year prospective study, a follow-up of each patient of 24 months in patients with inherited von Willebrand disease, sociodemographic and clinical data were assessed together with patient reported outcomes. And here we use the generic um, SF36 questionnaire and for the first time in this context we used um, a disease-specific quality of life questionnaire, the um, VWDQOL and a um, von Willebrand specific treatment satisfaction questionnaire. And at the first interims analysis after one year, data were available for 140 patients. 
And uh, if we divide them in different age groups, we had 17.9% of women who were um, older than 50 years. Then the biggest uh, group was the group of uh, women with a child-bearing uh, potential. This was 63%. Um, we, uh, we classified this group of patients in the age of 15 to 50 uh, years. And then there was um, the girly group, um, so 19% um, of uh, women uh, um, below 15 years. So you can as well see a bit the distribution over the different type of von Willebrand. The um, majority of the patients had a type 2, 51%. Type 1, 26%, and type 3 was uh, in, uh, present in 8.3%. Uh, and accordingly, um, the most used um, treatment was on-demand treatment, but as well 3.3% had um, long-term prophylaxis and as well the same amount short-term prophylaxis. We divided here. Um, this is a generic quality of life questionnaire, the SF36, and there is a physical component score and a mental component score. And uh, we compared here the women of the childbearing potential. This is a blue um, line. And then with um, older women, so above 50 years, this is a, a red bar. And what we could see is that there is no difference in their quality of life. So age here obviously does not play a significant um, has not a significant impact. By contrast, when we compared only the women in the um, childbearing um, years, so between uh, 15 and 50 years, so there we can see that there is a significant difference if we compare them across a different type of von Willebrand. And um, here, the violet group is those with the phenotype three, and they had the lowest physical component, and this is significant different across the different um, types. No significant difference was found for mental component score. As I mentioned, we used as well a disease-specific instrument, the VWD um, qual questionnaire, and this is the last, um, this is a total score, and here it's a bit the opposite. A high score implies a high impairment in quality of life, and where we found the highest impairments were in the domain feeling about the future, so they worry about their future, what will happen. And another domain with higher impairments were treatment for von Willebrand disease and um, attitude to deal with the disease. So these were the three domains which uh, reported the highest impairment. And in this study, we um, as well included a um, disease-specific treatment satisfaction questionnaire. And as well, here at the end, you find the total score over those different domains, and the highest impairment was found in the domain burden. And this is something what we clearly, who are working practically, we know that um, the women feel burdensome um, due to the disease, and this has a high impact. And I would like to conclude here with the last slide. So what we can say, even so I did not bring you all the studies, what I had done already previously, there is an increased interest in assessing quality of life in women with bleeding disorders. And mainly we can say that women with bleeding disorders are impaired in their quality of life due to menorrhagia. But we could find for von Willebrand patients different aspects which play a role, like the gender, the type of the disease, um, the presence of uh, chronic pain, the bleeding severity. And I think if we are doing some other studies, we will find some other um, very important aspects uh, which have an impact on the quality of life of women with bleeding disorders, mainly with von Willebrand disease. But what we can summarize is that so far in all the studies I have presented to you, mainly generic quality of life was applied, which is in somehow good if you want to compare with the general population, but which gives you a problem if you want to look deeper inside and if you want to get a real 
overview of the perception of the patient and the specific healthcare needs this patient has. And so for that reason, the recommendation would really be to use a disease-specific instrument. And last but not least, we should as well think of um, psychosocial intervention programs to provide to these women with bleeding disorders to address the critical issues, that they have the chance to speak about it, to exchanges, and um, to improve their actual situation. And with that, I would like to thank you. <laughs>